Coming up, Brooklyn Nets GM Sean Marks met with the media to break down how the trade of Mikhail Bridges to New York went down, whether or not Mikhail requested to leave the Nets organization, and what it means for this team going forward, including one Noah Clowney and how he can take advantage of this opportunity for himself as well. We dive into it all coming up next. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. He's Doug Nori. I'm Adam Marmick. We thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. We are 100% free on all those great platforms. And let you know, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. All summer long, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. And Doug, this is the other part of big moves that get made by organizations. Hearing from the general manager, hearing from key figures involved, and trying to get a clearer sense of when, who, what, how, why that it ends up going down. Sean Mark spoke, and I think by and large, if we take him at his word, it all happened pretty quickly. And they weren't necessarily anticipating this type of offer coming from Mikhail Bridges this summer. Yeah, it's always hard with, you know, pressers like this. Sean Marks is pretty good at the uh, talk a lot, say nothing sort mm -hmm. of like in the in terms of pressers, which is good. I mean, like a GM, it's not there. It's not, you know, it's not our predisposed right to hear every single thought that goes through his head. So and with the with when it comes to GMing, often, you know, the less you say is better. Yeah. You know, a la Leon Rose for over the Knicks, who's never said a single word uh, to the public. But um, sure so I don't exists. think don't know if he's yeah, real. I don't think you know, I don't think fans should look at these pressers and, and think that we're probably getting the full breadth of information. And that's fine. Like, I don't. I, but I do think Sean Marks was pretty forthright in a lot of what went down here. You know, where when it came to the Bridges trade, which we'll talk about and sort of like their overall thoughts. I do think that while he says, you know, it went together rather quickly. I that that part could be true, but the openness to trading him to trading bridges for sure was already on the table organizationally. So whether or not they were, you know, low key stealth fielding offers mm -hmm. or that they just understood on or like at a broader organizational level that like, hey, if something comes around, it's not going to be an auto click. No. Yeah. But and I think like that's probably. The sub that to me was the subtext of what he said, even if this next thing, you know, as he said, came together rel relatively quickly. Well, and one of the things at a very high level before we get to his comments on Mikhail Bridges is we've talked about this before. You wouldn't know if something was going on with the Brooklyn Nets. They are among the more tight lift organizations in terms of what their actual intentions may be, what the actual next step for their organization might be. And to your point about whether or not the Nets were fielding offers for Mikhail Bridges. When we went back and over this last year and a half, as we talk about all the time on the show, what they should be doing going into the rebuild. This also, to me, in some of the comments from Sean Marks we'll go over, was an indication that there was never a point when they weren't considering all these options. Now, our yeah. critique of being too, too willing to kind of sway between different paths, maybe that was never as, as real as it was perceived to be from the outside. More so that, yeah, if... If we want to present our package that Mikhail Bridges is the new face and this is the new core going forward, great. That's what we're telling you out front. But guess yeah. what? The wheels probably never stop turning in the background when it comes to opportunities and what it may look like if offer X or Y comes across the table for any number of players. And that can go all the way back to the Kevin Durant era as well, right? Like all of these decisions, I think the Nets remain an organization that is fluid and is open to hearing things, which gives a little contrast to the idea of not trading Mikhail right at the deadline when they made the initial trade with Kevin Durant, right? I think that they're patient, but they're also very open to what could come across their desk. Well, we had said many times, we're like, look, even if they had plans of trading him, that is Bridges, they would say all the, these other mm -hmm. things they were saying anyway, because it doesn't behoove them at all to be like, yeah, yeah maybe, right? Like, it, 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 it's, better <laughs> right. To, it's better to be steadfast in an organization in your 
um, in your sort of forward facing comments around a player. It's like, Hey, Mikhail's great. We love him. He's part of the future. He's going to attract stars. Even if you were actively shopping him in stealth mode, you would still come out and say those other things. Cause one, it increases his value. Yep. And two, it just increases the, uh, or it, 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 it's a floor raiser on the relationship you have with the player. Yep. And so, and I think most of these players understand that like they can be traded at any time. That's, that's the nature of the business. I don't think anyone is, um, surprised by stuff like that i mean bridges said himself that he hadn't requested a trade and he kind of just found out about it i mean it's like a little hard to believe that but um I'll, i guess we can take everyone at their word but so even all during that time when we were you know somewhat critical or you know or majorly critical of sean marks and company for not picking a direction we did have the caveat the asterisk that said they would say this even if they were trying to yeah. do it yeah. <laughs> like they would like they would say like they would talk like this even if they were out there because it doesn't pay at all to be wishy-washy about it when it comes to the public. And that comes to the first comment here from Sean Marks and the takeaways regarding specifically the choice to trade Mikhail Bridges and how Mikhail Bridges was involved. Sean Marks saying, it's been reported that Mikhail wanted to leave or requested a trade that could not be further from the truth. That's just not in Mikhail's character. That's not who he is. And that definitely did not happen. He was told by me when I called him and let him know that we were at the two-yard line. When you hear, so I mean, I'll just speak for myself first. Again, I think you've already said it here. No reason to say anything different. Like Mikhail came to us and demanded a trade or, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out here. The Nets, and I've seen this from some fans saying, you don't need to do this as players exit, whether it was Kevin Durant, you know, always trying to find a way to still maintain a level of respect or a level of understanding amongst players that the organization is never going to put it on your shoulders if things fall apart or break down. How much, how much do you, how much do you put into it? That Mikhail didn't know anything. Cause we all know the pieces that go together here, the podcast, the conversations. And Mikhail came out and said, Hey, now I'm here. He was surprised. We've heard Jalen Brunson said that he was at a dinner and he got the word along with Josh Hart and everybody. Right. So I, I tend to think that it was pretty clear at some point over the course of this off season, there were conversations internally yeah. with Mikhail Bridge and that's organization say, Hey, listen, here's where we're at. And if something comes up, obviously we'll, we'll go ahead and figure out if it works for both of us. And I'm sure Mikhail, whether directly or indirectly said, if the Knicks come a calling and it works for you guys, boy, that would really work out for me. And this does, this ends up feeling like the perfect opportunity for the Nets going, we get a huge haul and we get to turn around and say, we did right by a player that we did value for the short time he was with us. And by the way, Ian Begley had reported earlier that basically that bridge, you know, had said that Bridges side was ready to force the issue. Now, yeah. a lot of this, you know, to get to the Knicks and sometimes it's hard to know exactly where this is going to, you know, land. Sometimes that could be, frankly, maybe helps the Nets story to hear that, like he was going to do it anyway. Right. right. And they kind of no one, maybe no one wants to be in the mode of trade demands. Like, you know, that doesn't always, that isn't necessarily always a moniker that follows players around with them in the most positive light. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can understand why a player wouldn't really want that out there. Right. That like, you kind of just don't, I think at this point, you kind of don't want to be the guy who demands out of different places just because I don't know. That's just, it Even superstars really like you. Kevin Durant, that now follows him a little bit when you look oh, at totally his career, hard, right? Durant, so like that, I, yeah, like these guys, it's just like Paul George, maybe to some degree, not really. Like there's guys that, maybe that one was unfair, but there's there's guys that where that's just attached to sort of their legacy, and I can understand not wanting it. So it, I, I believe, my guess is like, you know, and we'll kind of move on to other parts of this press conference, but my, my if I were to guess right now, you know, just based on sort of the reporting and just based on logic, honestly, it's like yeah, yeah. everyone kind of knew he wanted to go to the Knicks. Even if there wasn't a formal trade request, it was obvious. And there's so much back channeling that happens in the, in the NBA between agents, between others, like just got people who are part of crews. Like it's, if the if the Nets weren't like having some inkling of this, I, they they would seem so dense. I, like so that's just there's no way. There's just no way they. The, so the truth is probably somewhere in between. It's like I want I, even if he weren't to come out and formally say I want this, everyone that has watched this for even two seconds would know that he did. So I, that's where it's kind of hard to believe. We'll get into some more of this press conference here in a second. We got some other parts to touch on some Noah Clowney stuff, uh, sort of like sort of where they are in terms of organization from the Sean Mark stuff. We'll get to that here in a second. 
first. Want to let you know the show is sponsored by Better Help. Look, it can you're online these days. We're all online these days. You're seeing other social media stuff happen and it can be really easy to compare your life to others. Uh the social media play a part in that. Oh, I mean, almost for sure, especially if you're online, you're seeing someone else's life sort of unfolding in this picture perfect way. You can get caught up wishing that your life looked like someone else's comparisons to the thief of joy. It's easy to envy someone other someone else's life. This is where better help can really step in and help you start managing some of this stuff. You can help you focus on what you want, not what others want. Better help wants you to focus on what you want. They want to make uh, getting therapy and starting therapy as easy as possible. That's why you got to give better help a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, super flexible. It's a hundred percent suited to your schedule. Uh, to get started on BetterHelp, you just fill out a brief questionnaire. You're going to get matched to a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time. Uh, no big deal on there. and No additional charge either. BetterHelp wants it to work for you. Look, stop comparing. Start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MBA today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MBA. All right, so as we continue today's Locked On Nets episode, talking about Sean Marks meeting with the media, breaking down how everything unfolded with the Mikhail Bridges trade. And then, as Doug mentioned, we're going to get to some quotes from Noah Clowney because he's the new featured, the featured man in Brooklyn here for the Nets. And I I, I, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of myself. Wow, I love the way he talks, man. I love yeah. the responses. This kid, this kid's got some energy to him. But as we stay focused on the Brooklyn Nets in terms of moving Mikhail Bridges, another quote here coming out of uh, Sean Marks, which by the way, a lot of people did a, a very good coverage here. When we look over at, we've been talking about Brian Lewis a lot lately because especially in the off season, I think he's done an excellent job, obviously with the New York post breaking down and covering this team when there's not a ton of people necessarily still holding on to the Brooklyn Nets. Why we tell you to follow us and or just being super dialed in. I like, he's just clear yeah. that he's very, very dialed in to like yeah, sort of either, I mean. either through direct quotes or just through understanding the general tenor of sort of what's happening. I think which yep. sometimes is the best thing that you can understand is to like, you're I'm always going to be told one thing, but to understand sort of the differentiation of like one thing to another and be able to read yeah. the subtext. I think Brian Lewis is doing as good a job as he is just, is just doing as good a job as any person. So there you go, Brian Lewis, friend of the, friend of the show, as we like to say, Sean Marks also went on to talking about what, where the organization was when it comes to an opportunity, like a trade like this, you have to look at yourself in the mirror as an organization and say, what's the best path for us moving forward here? And how do we do this? And how do we have that sustainable success that we want? So when you're able to add that amount of draft assets over the course of last year, that's going to help us in our trajectory long term. The the double up here is is going back to even the, the Kevin Durant of it all and saying, now over the course of this, what have we achieved? We we moved Kevin Durant, the superstar era died somewhat quickly here in Brooklyn. But in that process, we brought in more players, obviously Cam Johnson as well, but Mikhail Bridges. Now we move him and we we take a step back and realize, well, we can refill our draft assets in a way that we never had been able to before. And that that's, I get, I get back to the top of the flexibility or the willingness to be flexible and say, okay, the version where we didn't think that maybe this level of offer was going to come from Mikhail Bridges, that's easy to look past that and say, we want to be competitive. We want to go forward. We want to make the playoffs. It's a good front facing message for the fan base. But then when these offers come in, and then when you miss the playoffs last season as well, I think it's very easy to go, oh, well, on the other hand, in a very, very deep 2025 draft class, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And watching Houston spike your pick to the third in the lottery, even in a weak class, has to be the reminder of what you missed out in the short term. Yeah, and look, this is, the, you know, kind of come to Jesus moment here around where, where the Nets probably you know, figured they stood. I do believe that they weren't going to field this offer from everybody. And the offer had to be overwhelming because the cut yes. bait on the bridges yes. piece, like it wasn't going to be just like, you know, three first round picks from the Grizzlies, let's say, and then like, you know, move on with your life. I, I think it had to be overwhelming for a couple of reasons. One, it had to be so clear that it was going to reset things Two, it had to be so clear on a public nature, like a, yep. on a forward facing thing that like it'd be like, hey, we got blown away. We couldn't say no. I, I think it actually that probably was pretty important for them just like PR wise to be able mm -hmm. to go but organizationally, obviously, right? As many picks as you can get, you should always just, you know, they say six, ask for seven. That's how my daughter does her negotiations. If I say 10 minutes, <laughs> it just goes to 12. It doesn't matter where we anchor. It just goes to, you know, it goes, More. Uh, you know. 
anchor anchor you know times 20 percent or something but the um heck of a business but, woman, by the way. <laughs> yeah and it's, it's not frustrating at all but the <laughs> uh but the but the part so i think they did have to be blown away I, I i i suspect that part is true but being open to the idea of one being out early on this rather than late because you have to at least be open to that idea and be willing to take like the perception hit that it's kind of over, right? That you've, that yes. you're not going to yep. win, that you're not, that you're going to lose. And I, I've heard some people say, well, oh, you know, tanking is the easiest thing for a GM. I, I think that's in some ways correct because it lengthens the timeline of like your job security because you can just stink for mm -hmm. like years and years. And so I think it is easy on one hand, but it's also difficult because it's an admission that things went wrong. And so, and usually when you make that admission, it's like comes at the cost of your job. So I I'm like kind of sort of in the middle on like where Marx is with this piece It's clear that Josiah is like full, you know, full trust in him. But in terms of just like being open to the idea, like, dude, it was so important that they were open to the idea because look at the bulls, uh, like the bulls are the perfect example of why you cannot wait. They, they waited two years too long. Yep. And traded their guys for like kind of nothing, right? Like Caruso for Giddy. All right, maybe that works out. DeRozan for nothing, two two second round picks. They can't trade Levine. They can't trade Vooch. They tried, right? They signed they oversigned Patrick Williams to like a massive contract. And it's like, where are they going? And yep. and so you just look at what happens if you do wait too long. So kudos, I guess, to the Nets for just seeing that in an era where it's clear too that draft picks are even more important now than ever. So long winded well, I, story to say that, like, I think that Sean Marks is like the openness to know that they had to like make a choice, I think is pretty important here. And, and, and clearly not something that he just started talking about on like June 20th or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, like I, that's like, I think they kind of knew it was coming. And following up here with another quote from Sean Marks, I think ties in to this part of it. This is something that we continue to be strategic on and let it play out. But this build, I do think it's going, is it going to take time? Has he questions that we'll be strategic in it. But I do think being in the market, being in this market, excuse me, with the amount of draft assets, we've done it before. Not that it's going to be an expedite, expedited by any means, but I don't think it's going to be a long process either. So here's the both and I, I, I wanted that quote to tie it back to what you're discussing about organizationally and having confidence with people saying, oh, rebuild's easy. Well, OK, in Sean Mark's situation where it does seem like he's the Teflon GM and can survive any iteration of this of this franchise. Yes, it feels like ah, we're going through a rebuild. No big deal. That's all well and good until maybe something doesn't work out with the picks next year and you don't get one of the top four picks in the draft. You accidentally win one too many games or you draft four first round picks and only one of them turns out to be a real player of substance to your franchise. Or it's three years later and Joe Sy decides this isn't working out or Joe Sy decides he's, he's selling the team because it's worth 80 times more than it was when he bought into the NBA, right? Like there are way more factors of the negative connotation attached to being a GM helming a rebuild of this magnitude, especially after you've already been through iterations of this process where it's worked or not worked to varying degrees. Like you've already had some cracks at the apple here. This isn't Sean Marks brought in for the first time to start a rebuild. This is him now getting into his second version of a rebuild. Now there's, there's tons of confidence here organizationally, but the pressure is still there for sure. I would assume well, e even if, dissimilar to some other spots it seems unique it is it, there is pressure i i guess my point is the the pressure is t it, it's there's tons of pressure always this time it's just with this iteration you get long it takes longer to figure out whether it's working or not yes yeah yeah like yeah. with yeah, like, you like with, with, rebuild, with you go well you got to give me at least two to three years to, to when it's year three of when it's year three of kevin durant and the contract runs out in two years <laughs> right you've got nothing to show for it it's like very clear that the goals have not been met. Right. This in this in this version of it, the goals are a little bit more ambiguous because the time that it takes maybe a 19 year old to yes. figure out if yes. they're like actually great or not, then like that that just takes more than two years. So I guess like that's my only thing is it's it, there's the pressures there, but the goals, the the, the protracted timeline on whether that's a success or not. One more quote here from Sean Marks and then turning our attention over to Noah Clowney, the man who does not give a darn. We, we have to keep it clean here about what you think the timeline is to move on from being a rookie. We'll get into all that to close things out in just one second. 
All right, before we get into that, I'll tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Look, it can feel like sometimes sports really slows down during the summer. You love sports. We love the NBA. We love, you know, when getting into NFL in the season. There's still MLB going on right now. FanDuel's got you covered all summer long with bets in kind of every shape and fashion you can go. They got money line bets for MLB. They got just the player props, the hits, the home runs, the strikeouts. Really, every single way you can slice and dice it is going for you over on FanDuel. Also, this summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every single day, all summer long. You want to head on over to FanDuel.com, start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, so as we wrap things up on the Locked On Nets episode, talking about Sean Marks meeting with the media, obviously following the massive trade of Mikhail Bridges to the crosstown New York Knicks. Rivalry discussions, if you want some of that, get over to X, because Doug is engaging with everyone. Uh, he's having a great time. A lot of fans want, want his opinions and his thoughts, and I love it. One of my favorite ones, just a sidebar here for a second, is Doug's been called a shill now for the Nets organization, which I oh, think is great. great. I think it's great, because if you if you watch or follow the show, neither one of us hits that mark, but out of the two, I'd have to be the guy that sometimes is willing to go the extra step of defending the organization and choices they make. But, hey, you get labeled what you get labeled, buddy. I'm Frame it, just baby. the man trying to host the podcast. Frame it. Put it on the wall. Just never thought we'd see the, never <laughs> yeah, thought we'd, never thought we'd see the day. But guess what? You know what? There's a first time for everything. I'm pr proud to see it. Uh, not a show. Uh, there's a bit of a, a rehash here of the we'll be strategic. But he says we'll be strategic in how we continue to build. This time, we can build through the cap space that we'll have. And here's the notable part for me. Quote, having flexibility moving into this new collective bargaining agreement, nobody's quite sure how it's going to be. Look at free agency right now and how it's affecting different teams. So for us to maintain that flexibility into the season is pretty important for us. That might be the most interesting comments out of this from Sean Marks because it is reflecting on the new landscape of the NBA, what it means for this team going forward. And the idea is we've said, listen, they're going to have to do work to get to the salary floor next season. They have all this draft capital. And if you're executing right, which I'm sure for the fan base is maybe easy and hard to rely on, you can look and say, we'll have money and we'll have assets. We'll get to, we'll get to pick our direction. We get to dictate our future here and hopefully get a sense of this new landscape before we make our move. We might get a sample of other teams that did it right, wrong, or somewhere muddled in the middle before we have to plant our flag in 2025. Yeah, I will. I'll push back in my, in a non show way. I mean, this this part oh, is no. the easy. This is the easiest quote ever because it's like, oh, we'll get to look. It's like, well, you get to look because it went so wrong the other way, right? Well, that's so fine, it's like, but it's, it's still like, true though, right? Like, no, yeah, like, yeah, it is. Only, it only is by true. our own mistakes do we get to now take time. Yes. sure, yes, exactly. Like, yeah, that's it's not so, a positive, I, 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 can, I know. I, I'll just play devil's advocate on this quote. It's like, yes, he is right. You get the. Tr it's like, but you don't get the. You know, you don't get to pat yourself on the back too much around that, even though it is true. So I don't think it's a it's not a feather in your cap to be able to like look at the landscape of, of, of this stuff, because this was like clearly not the original timeline, but yeah. it is correct. And the nets are in a place where they're just going to have to, like, there's not going to be any reason to sign any big free agents here in the short term. Yeah. And let me be clear. I, I'm not taking it as a, Oh, ah, the, the, oh congratulations, no, no. Sean Marks. Very good for you. But to your point, it's worth, it's worth noting that you only get to have these type of conversations after you've made kind of a mess of things when you had a superstar oh, okay. roster. That being said, they're at least in that position, whether or not I think nobody deserves the credit. Here you are. And hopefully for a team that's made missteps, good. You're a team that's been known to make missteps. So let's let's have you learn something from other teams now that you're in this position you put yourself in. And by the way, like with the current trajectory of the NBA, like this is the time to really be in it because the 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 A1 most of the A1 superstars are locked up and on yeah. their teams and not going anywhere. And there's a younger group that's coming up now that's going to be locked into their spots also, right? And so most, I mean, short of like maybe Giannis being super unhappy, which is re a real possibility, I just don't see a lot of these other like tier 1A guys being available in any yeah. realm just because they, either they've signed their contracts, they have massive risk associated with them, like Embiid, let's say, uh, just like an injury and just sort of like oh, how he's going to. And so like, I think this is a time to like, not really go looking for those guys anyway, because I think it's just going to be mostly hard because we're seeing this group of overpaid guys sort of cycling out of their old contracts that are really yeah. hard to move, like the Ingrams and the Levines and these guys where it's just like, 
hey, what do we do here with this money? Like, I, yeah. we're just kind of stuck with, with stuck with it. So I think the timeline does help with them in the state of the current NBA. Look, these things change in two years. I, who knows? You know, and and obviously, if Giannis comes available and you could have had him, that's gonna that could look bad. Right. I, I agree with that. But there's not a ton of examples like that. So as we turn our attention away from Sean Marks and then kind of the offshoot, right? It's the it's the team and the players going forward. And we've mentioned, yeah, Cam Thomas is going to be the new guy you focus on. And so is Noah Clowney, who got a small sample size down the stretch of the season. There's a there's a ton here um, coming out of the coverage of his conversation as well, from being really excited for Nicholas Claxton to be back and what they can start to work on there but also well, playing pool with his family and then learning that Mikhail Bridges had been traded. There's one quote on that front, which I think is, is certainly notable of my next thought was Noah Clowney said um, that Mikhail should feel almost feel proud in a sense to get traded for five first round picks and superstar at superstar level type things. But the one that I loved here and all of this, is Noah Clowney coming out and saying, it's an opportunity for me, so I yeah. can't waste it, Clowney said. No shade to Bridges. That's my dog. I love him. But to see us going into more of a rebuilding standpoint, that's an amazing opportunity for me, and I got to try to take advantage of that. From a young player who also said, you have to play 82. I've been told I have to play 82 games, or otherwise I'm still considered a rookie. He says, I'm not a rookie anymore. He seems to be coming into this with the with the right attitude and mindset of okay teams rebuilding we're going to be bad guess what that means i get to claim this team and be one of the focal points of it going forward yeah it's a great quote great quote from him like the recognition of like this is a great opportunity and like he's young enough to be able to realize it i mean obviously so so young even for nba standards at the at standards at this point to understand that like he's going to get that full 82 game sample now and it's going to be on a team that like is probably just going to be bad Mm -hmm. but that there's like growth potential within your own individual game from that. Uh, these were great quotes from him and really mature quotes, honestly, from a guy who yeah. remember is like, so is really even for NBA standards it is so young. So, um, you know, not much more to say beyond that, except oh, that like clearly quick, though, going, Oh God, yeah. sorry. Just cause I, this was, this was tagged into the Noah Clowney uh, article, but this was from Sean Marks uh, regarding this is not only Noah Clowney, but also Derek Whitehead. No, at this point, we're going to throw him out there. We'll probably get into this a little bit more. He hasn't played in a couple of years on a consistent basis. So Sean Marks, I want to, at the end of this, we'll come back around and look at how Sean Marks spoke about Noah Clowney, how he spoke about Derek Whitehead, Cam Thomas, the future of this organization going forward. I want to make sure that I just put this in here before we closed out. There's a whole other conversation, which is the young core and what this team is going to look like in the short term going forward. Sorry. Yeah. And by the way, and like, so later on this week too, like we're leading into this weekend because this kind of goes with it. Like one, the clowny piece. Um, I mean, clearly uh, just to round back to his quote real quick, yeah. like that is the sign of a guy who can't, well, yeah, you didn't put it back up, but uh, the sign of a guy who can be like, have like show leadership potential, like having this attitude and this maturity level around something like this early is, and to sort of speak about other players. Like he's had an interesting three whitehead quote talking about like, Whitehead sort of like still getting up to like NBA level like readiness, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was like getting really interesting. Maybe we'll hit on this next time because I want to talk about more about Derek Whitehead like sort of leaving le leading in the summer league. Yep, but it was like an interesting quote based on sort of the recognition that other guys need to be lifted up to. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of leadership stuff. Um, like yeah. from Clowney, I think that like you have to be really really encouraged about. So good stuff from him. I think overall good stuff for Marks. Uh, even if it's the even if it's of the like. I mean, the variety, it's still always good to sort of hear these guys talk about it, um, especially in the summer league. We got what's our, no, our standard thing is you, you, um, it's easy to, you know, it's very easy to say the wrong thing and saying yeah, yeah. the right thing gets you nothing. Saying the right thing does not get you accolades, but when you say the wrong thing, you come totally. out of one of these pressures and go, Oh my God, what, you can say doing? the wrong thing. Yes. yes. You, know, you can say the wrong thing or you can just <laughs> say literally nothing at all. So, right. um, those, so those are the two other, unfortunately in sports, uh, in the sports media, that's sometimes the way it is. Look, got tons of stuff. Again, we're hoping to have some cap talk here by the end of the week. I think that's going to happen. Um, just had our, just some scheduling stuff kind of came up also, like I just said a minute ago, we're definitely going to lead into summer league, summer league starts. Yeah this weekend i do we do want to talk about Tariq whitehead i think that that's going to be the guy that all eyes are on for nets nation is like no restrictions on whitehead and maybe this will be just like the next non-cap episode is that like what is what does Tariq whitehead kind of need to show here in summer league for fans to get really really uh excited about so we'll have that coming up later on this week every child is an artist the problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up why that 
is Pablo Picasso. <laughs> R.I.P. Man, one of the all-time oh, great poets. We'll oh. uh, I know, shocker, shocker. Uh, in a minute, what I say? Oh yeah, right. One of the all-time great poets. <laughs> R.I.P. Totally missed. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball, basketball.